So I almost made a really big mistake last weekend. This weekend, I am starting artichokes and only artichokes, and I wanted to have you guys join me in the process. So, time to get my hands dirty for the first time in a while. So, I'm gonna take off these little rings right here. And then, I'm gonna get some soil, some um, organic potting mix. I'm gonna start it over at this potting bench right over here. And we are gonna go ahead and start the first crops of the season. So the big mistake I almost made was starting things too early. And I can imagine that I'm not the only one who almost makes this mistake or makes this mistake. It can be really tempting to want to start all the things when everybody else seems to be starting all the things. Um, I know people in like North Carolina are starting a lot of things. In California, things have already been started. In Florida, it's maybe even too late to start certain things. But here in New York, our season doesn't really start until mid to late April with cold hardy things and it's February 2nd so that is more than eight weeks um, before I should really be starting anything so artichokes are the exception because I like to start them 12 weeks before our frost date so next weekend is February 8th and 9th which is not quite the middle of the month I'm gonna wait until the following weekend and then I'm gonna start my onions. I'm going to start some brassicas, things that take longer like cauliflower, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. And following that in early, early March, I'm gonna start peppers, then tomatoes, and then you know all the other stuff. But if you have been following me for the past like couple weeks, you'll know that we are actually scaling down the garden this year just because of time limitations. I only have these shelves. If I need it, I can use the top of this crate, which may not even be there for much longer. I can use these shelves. Um, I can, I set up TV tables sometimes and just put stuff on TV tables, but I don't have a whole lot of room. And so I can't start things like three months early. So I need to start things, pace myself so that I don't have to pot up everything so fast because potting things up can be really overwhelming. So don't just, don't, don't start too early thinking you have space for everything you wanna start because everything you start is gonna to need to be potted up maybe once, maybe twice, maybe even three times and you might not have room for all those things. Plus it's just not worth it because things are gonna do so much better once they're planted in the ground and they get that nitrogen rich rainwater and all that good stuff, so if they spend most of their lives in an indoor environment, you know, they've had months in here, it's gonna be harder for them to adjust to being in the ground. So it's just not a good idea to start things too early. Don't pay attention to what you're seeing in like nationwide or worldwide Facebook groups. Pay attention to what people are doing locally to you. Local resources are so important to tap into. Super dusty bag, it's a little old. I gotta go get some water, add a lot of water to that really, really dry soil. You definitely want to add moisture before you start your seeds. I talk about that a lot in my seed starting video from last year, which you can find somewhere on my channel. I'll link it down below too. So, honestly, I'm going to use my blender. I'm gonna fill up my blender with some water. Okay, let's start some artichoke seeds. So this potting bench, if you followed me last year, which many of you probably did not, we got this potting bench last year on Facebook Marketplace for $50 and it was the best $50 spent. This cool part about the potting bench is it has this little bin area where I can mix up some soil. You can use seed starting mix. I just use a really nice potting mix because I prefer the brand um, Coast of Maine, but you can definitely, Junior, 
No, you don't need to be up here. You can use a seed starting mix. You can make your own seed starting mix, whatever you want. Um, I already did um, sterilize these containers. I'm using really deep pots because artichokes <laughs> have deep tap roots and they do not like to be transplanted. So if I set them up in really deep pots, they're not gonna grow out of this by the time you need to transplant them. So I'll go ahead and we'll add water to the soil. You want your soil to be like brownie batter. Most importantly is you're not using dry soil because I wanna show you guys something. So I added a ton of water, it's still completely dry because the water has a difficult time mixing in to soil when it's dry. So you really have to mix it. That being said, when you take dry soil and you just pour water right on top, it's really not getting into all the pores of the soil. And so you're gonna end up with constantly dry soil that you can never really get moist. So by starting off with like a nice moist soil, mixing it together, making sure it's really moist, you're giving your seeds a great start for germination. Yeah, that's my two cents. Okay, so right now it's kind of more like cake mix, so I'm just mixing it so it's a little bit more like a brownie, brownie dough mix. I'm just gonna fill up these pots. I already have a tray right here that I'm gonna put them into. The trays that I use are from Bootstrap Farmer and they're great because they're super super durable and they don't flex when you pick them up. So with like a lot of soil filled up like this, they're um, much safer to carry around. So I'm starting for artichokes. Um, if you've ever grown them before, you'll know that they are huge plants. Uh, they take up a ton of space. And I actually already have six outside in the garden. And because we've had a mild winter, I think many of them, if not all of them, will perennialize, which means they'll come back. Okay, so next I'm just gonna tamp it down. So the seeds I have are actually from MI Gardener, and they were last year, so they may not germinate as well because they're now in their second season. Um, so I'm gonna plant three per pot. Last year they germinated really well for me. I think I started four and ended up with six. So I may end up with more this year. I always forget about that. I always forget to factor in the fact that I don't just thin out, I like to divide and repot. Okay, so I planted these. I always like to use like the end of a marker to push the seeds in a little bit and to bury them because I feel like I can control just how deep they go. These seeds are probably like an eighth of an inch or something. So they're pretty big seeds and so you want to bury them like two times their size. So maybe like a fourth of an inch. I'm patting it down just lightly. I don't want to I don't want to like compress the soil, but I do want to decrease some of those air pockets so that the soil and the seed has good contact. So last year I started artichokes for the first time not having any idea what to expect eh, what to expect. Because of that I didn't really walk you guys through how I did it or what I did or really any of the process. But this year since I had so much success last season and we harvested like a handful of artichokes in our first year, which is really amazing for such a newbie gardener like myself, I decided I wanted to walk you through the process of how I start artichokes. If you live in a zone like eight or warmer, or maybe in seven or warmer, you can probably grow artichokes pretty easily because if they don't produce in their first year, they'll produce in their second, third, fourth, so on. They're perennials in many regions. But here in our region, we're in zone 6A. Oftentimes we have like five, we act more like five, um, but some years we can act more like seven, depending on how cold the winters get. We can have artichokes that only last for a year and don't produce anything. They can last for multiple seasons. So the chance of not getting fruit at all is pretty high. So many people don't start them at all. I actually don't know anybody in this area that's grown artichokes before. So last year I did it just for fun. It was a fun experiment. I'm from California, so bringing something from home felt like exciting and motivating. So I decided to start some. 
and it was such an amazing experience just to see that I'm capable of doing something that is challenging. I'm capable of stepping outside of the mold a little bit and so are you. We all are. Uh, so I'm going to share my process and I encourage you to try something that's hard in your region. Um, it might be broccoli, it might be peppers, um, might be beans. It, it's different for everybody or it might be something, something like watermelon and just try it. Learn it, learn about it, learn what it needs, learn to see how you could make it happen where you are. Just keep working at it and eventually when it happens it's going to feel so rewarding. So, um, I'm going to get my little, my little cute trendy watering can. I don't remember when I got this, but at one point it leaked and then like a rock or something got clogged in the hole where it leaked and now it doesn't leak anymore. I'm going to fill this up. I'm going to water the artichokes that I just planted. I'm going to mark them, label them with the date that I started them at and I'll be done for now, for now, for now. Okay, got my water. So with artichokes, my intuitive gardening means that I don't keep them too wet because they're used to a Mediterranean climate. That's where they grow best. Mediterranean climates are very dry, so they are very drought tolerant. So I don't keep them too wet. I don't want them to dry out completely. If you were to grow artichokes in California, they would be outside all winter long. They would be exposed to those cooler, colder temperatures, and then they would produce the following um, spring, like early spring. So if you want them to produce in a climate like where we live, you can't wait until it's warm to plant them or else they won't go through the like, dormant period. So what I do is I start them really early. So it's February 2nd today and I'll harden them off really early. So in like April, I'm getting them exposed to temperatures in the 30s and 40s and then I'll plant them before our last frost date. Even though we might get a light freeze, they don't, they don't die at all. They can totally handle that. But they'll go through a dormant period really early in life. So it kind of tricks them into believing that they're going into their second season. Little baby artichokes. Okay, so that's it. We have our artichokes planted and Junior and I, we say goodbye.